On today's episode, we get diggy with it. In the description below, you'll find the project files I'll be using, including blood splatters and also a Photoshop file of the Deadpool title logo from the previous tutorial. Now you can use that if you don't have Element 3D. We'll be using Element 3D from Video Copile in this tutorial. The description below is where you can find it. It's a great plugin. You can use it for obviously importing a lot of 3D elements into After Effects. So let's get into it. Okay, let's go straight to composition. And we're gonna uh, go new composition and we're gonna select custom HD TV 720. Let's change it to 24 frames a second. I'm just gonna make this uh, five seconds long. Now import bloody clouds and the Deadpool PSD from the download pack and just open up Deadpool PSD, uh, which we did last time. So you can use that if you don't have Element 3D. So let's just grab the clouds and drop that down and just scale it in to the project window like so. And let's select the text tool. And I'm using the font, which is also in the download pack called Rogue Hero. If you wanna know how to install the font into your computer, just simply check out our other tutorial, uh, He-Man's title sequence. Now I'm just gonna type in there Deadpool and we're gonna resize the uh, box so it's nice and clean like so. And then we're going to select the move tool and we're gonna move it in position. I'm gonna center it into the center of the project. Now let's go to layers, new, solid, select make composition size, make sure it's black and select okay. Once we've done that, uh, what we're gonna do is just use the quick whip tool and select the Deadpool text, select the uh, layer and let's go to effect, video copilot elements. What we're going to do is making sure that solid is selected and uh, turn off the text because we don't want to see that. And first thing we want to do is go straight through to text and mass. And then we're going to go to path layer one and select Deadpool, which is our text layer. Now, the next thing we do is hit scene setup and then extrude and our text appears in the project window. Now using the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard will allow you to zoom in and out of the workspace. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is select the bevel. I'm going to select the style called style, funny enough. Now, the reason I selected that bevel is because it matches very similar and very closely to the text in the trailer for Deadpool. So let's apply that straight onto the text. And as you can see, uh, now the next thing we're gonna do is going to select the materials. Now select pro shaders and let's go to translucence and we're gonna grab gummy. That's right, gummy is a nice red gummy color. Now looking at each one of these uh, textures, we can select and turn on and off the textures on the actual font. So I've found the right font location so i've dragged the gummy straight onto that other texture and it's overwritten the color as you can see now i'm going to just find out where the others are located now in this situation i want to use darker colors in the back because the white is too light so i'm going to scroll up and i'm going to go straight to the uh, textures here for fabrics now this nice black texture is fine so i'm going to drop that on the back and this is what our logo is going to look like I'm happy with that. Let's select OK and bam, there it is straight in the project. Next thing we're going to do is just going to close the custom layers and we're going to go straight through to world transform and I'm going to use the position Z and I'm going to negative it. That zooms it in funny enough. It's really weird. I don't know why you want to go negative, but anyway, it makes it larger. So we're going to select that. And once we've done that and resized it and we're happy with it, let's grab the blood splatter and drop that above on the timeline and now I'm going to change the screen to overlay. Now I'm going to press T on my keyboard and get the transparency up and drop it to 49% and we're almost done. Now this is a texture obviously that goes over the top of the font and over the black of the background of the layer. So I'm happy with that. Next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to start animating. As you can see, there's no animation in it. So selecting the text, which is funny enough turned off, we're going to animate the text. So let's press S for scale, select 600%. Now I've just, uh, I've clicked on the uh, stopwatch so we can start animating. 
and I'm gonna move straight to the next one and hit 100%. And then I'm gonna slowly uh, move it a couple of frames ahead and drop it uh, plus or minus anything between 100 to 120. Now the reason to do that is because I don't want it to jump around too much, but it's almost going to give it sort of like a heartbeat. So I'm gonna move it forward a couple of frames, drop it back to 100, a couple of frames, drop it to say 119, drop it back to 100, drop it forward um, to say 112, and then back to 100 again. So that way you get a little bit of a variance. Now once we're happy with that, we can actually go in there and select all the keyframes on the timeline and uh, copy and paste them. So I'll just move forward. As you can see, it's a slight heartbeat. I'm happy with that. I'll just uh, throw one more keyframe in there. Okay. So what we can do, obviously, is once we've finished putting in a few variations, we select all the keyframes and we copy them, Control C, move forward on the timeline, Control V to paste them. And all we're gonna do is keep on moving throughout the project line and control V to paste them in until we get to the end. And then we're going to zoom it back in again. So we get to the last keyframe and I'm just going to make it 600 again, once I get to the end, so 600 like so, and pressing N on the keyboard will cut off the timeline. So when I uh, press hard enter, you'll get to this animation like so it's like a heartbeat. Now, if, for example, uh, you wanted to uh, make some variations, you can go in there and move around the keyframes like I am here. You can even select each keyframe and double click and go into each keyframe and readjust it individually. So if you want to have surgical precision in adjusting the keyframes, you can do that. And once you're happy with it, obviously you can select OK and uh, like so. So I'm going to go in there and just uh, change some of the variations of the keyframes so that it doesn't look too uh, robotic so it looks a little bit more natural maybe even like it's got a, a flutter in the heartbeat so to speak now this is where the fun begins we're gonna bring in some blood splatters from the download pack which is obviously in the download area below this video so let's go straight into the project area and uh, we're going to double select and we're going to import the blood splatters so let's select them. I'm gonna play each and individually each one so we can have a look. So we got this one and we got some uh, nice sprays coming through. Excellent. So we don't have to look at them all, but what I'm gonna do is gonna uh, bring it up so it's just after it drops from the 600 and bring the first one in. Now these are already pre-comped, so all we have to do is drag them around and place them. So once I'm happy with the location, like, so I'm going to bring it in a little bit on the timeline and then I'm going to drop the next one in and I'm going to rotate it. So press R for rotation and just rotate it around, move it into position. And the next thing we we'll want to do is on the timeline, you can see each video needs to be uh, moved so that the start point starts at different times. So I'll quickly uh, just uh, move this uh, slider here for example, to show you. And we're gonna stagger it like steps. So what happens is each time on the timeline, the slider moves forward. Uh, what happens is the next video then starts. So what will happen is we'll have a, almost like a flow effect of the blood spurts, which is what we're after. So we're going to keep on adding all these blood splutters in by keep on shuffling down the line. And uh, we're going to, uh, get close to the finished product. So again, we're just gonna keep on moving it forward. So keep on grabbing the blood splatters, shuffling down the timeline, moving it into position, get the right angle in which you want it, and, and uh, we'll just keep on doing it to the next video. And we just keep doing it until we get to the very end. So instead of showing you the same process over and over and over again, I'm gonna quickly speed up the video and then we'll get to the end of the video. So as you can see, when I speed the video up, you can see I'm moving each video into place, but you can see the uh, step appearance of uh, each video. So the reason for that, obviously, like I was saying before, is as each video hits a particular time on the timeline, what happens, it starts to play, and then we get that nice look 
of blood splattering at different times. So it will look like this. And that, my friends, is our Deadpool video title sequence. So obviously the next thing we do, so the next thing we're gonna do now is simply go down to the composition timeline. So we're just gonna select that. Then we're gonna to to file and we're going to go down to export. Let's go down to export and uh, add to render queue. And we're gonna go down to the lossless settings. I'm gonna send it down to H264. And uh, I'm just gonna go check the uh, okay. Actually, before I do that, let's check the uh, compression settings. Now I'm happy with that. Um, select okay. And we're gonna select where we're gonna save it. I'm just gonna save it on the desktop. So I'm just gonna call this Deadpool. And I'm just gonna save it now and hit render. And then it's going to play out and render. And that's it, we're done. Now, if you want to become Film Master Subby, it's pretty simple. Simply subscribe to the channel, check out our Facebook or Twitter. Make sure that you comment in the video so uh, we can have a look and see what you guys want to see next. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.